roughly two years ago when Expedia Group's then CEO, Dara Kusper Shahi, left to go run Uber. Many investors decided it was time for them to leave, too. The company had a couple of tough quarters. After his departure, the stock got clobbered, falling from more than $150 down to less than $100 in February of last year. But since then, the online travel play has been gradually working its way higher once again. When Expedia Group reported its latest quarter at the end of July, they knocked it out of the park and the stock caught fire. Then the whole market rolled over, and while Expedia rebounded over the last few days, it's still more than a few points off its 52-week highs. So should we view this as a terrific buying opportunity in a stock that is clearly trending higher. Let's check in with Mark Okerstrom. He's the president and CEO of Expedia Group, who took over from Dara two years ago to get a better sense of how things are going and how things are turning. Mr. Okerstrom, welcome to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Great Thank you too. so much, Mark. Thank yeah, you. Happy to be here. Oh, great. Now, um, everyone knows Expedia, but it's really Expedia Group. Right. But I want people to understand that they, they may think it's one company, yeah. but you've got a bunch of good companies. We've got a ton we? of great companies. Uh, you know, I think most of the leading brands, not all, right. but most of the leading bands in travel, whether it's Verbo in the alternative accommodation space, Expedia, Hotels.com, Travelocity, Orbitz, Cheap Tickets, Travago, you name it, we've got a host of incredible brands. Well, let me ask you why. Why not just brand everything Expedia, which is such a good brand and everybody knows yeah. it? Well, the fact of the matter is, is that consumers love to have choice, and consumers have developed relationships with each of these beloved brands over the years. And what we've done is essentially brought them under one family, allowed them to share a lot of the great technological advantages that we've got, allow them to access all of our great inventory, including great lodging inventory, right. air, car, hotel, etc. And it gives us the scale advantages that we might have if we are one brand, but we're able to spread it across all these brands that have loyal customer following. I, I wonder, at, our, at, at the DeBarian, we're, you're kind of our wholesalers, so to speak. Yeah. You handle all our bookings. Do people understand that you actually are the backbone of a lot of corporate <laughs> bookings, that if you're going to be able to get, say, Merck's business or yeah. Celgene's business, you have to be affiliated with Expedia? Yeah, absolutely. We've got uh, a, a big part of our business uh, and a growing part of our business is powering uh, other other players out there. We power a lot of the big traditional corporate travel players that right. might service that. We've also got an incredible business called Agencia, which is about the fourth largest corporate travel agency in the world that also allows uh, us to go into big corporates and service their travel management business. Now, uh, we were huge fans of Home Away. And we were because I love the product. And mm -hmm. I always felt it was undervalued. You guys obviously did, yes. too. But you branded it new. Yes. And is that something that people have been having a hard time to find? Because I know that, uh, you, that at one point you weren't that happy with how it's going. But you've died, you really kind of turned it around. Yeah. So um, we recently rebranded the whole thing to Verbo. And the reason why we did it was that the original brand that was the essence of Home Away yeah. was VRBO, Vacation Rentals by Owner. Right. A very authentic brand. Uh, and as we thought about our international expansion plans, which are kind of the next phase of growth, we said, listen, let's pick a great brand that we can really back. Uh, it's Verbo. We had a little bit of hiccups as we transitioned to the Verbo brand, uh, but we're optimistic that over the long term, it's going to continue to be a great growth brand into the future. Now, we always looked, when I was talking to the guys that, that I like very much at Home Away, that there was this great disparity between the unicorn of Airbnb <laughs> and, and uh, uh, home away to yeah. Verba. I mean, is it, are, are these, when you see somebody like an Uber, yeah. or when you see somebody like a WeWork, do you think that people <laughs> are now getting a little religion that when you're a public company, yeah. maybe you're cheaper than the private company, yeah. so to speak? Well, listen, we've always strived to have a track record of delivering strong, healthy top line growth and healthy profit right, growth. We right. think that's good business. <laughs> and, you know, as we look at a lot of these companies that have gone uh, public recently, right. nice top line growth, a little bit shy on the profitability. Right. And listen, I think at some point investors, what do they want? They want to see that cash flow flowing. And we built a great company that produces great free cash flow. And we're pretty proud of it. In one of the conference calls, it was really terrific. You talked about how people see the planes full and people know that the hotels are full. So therefore, you know, are we doing well? Yes. <laughs> I think those are signs also that the consumer's going yeah. places. Yeah. Listen, I think consumer confidence still uh, remains pretty high. You've got this secular shift from things to experiences right. that is buoyant travel. From what we can see, if you look on a global basis, I mean, travel is just going to continue to go up, up, and up, and we're absolutely thrilled to be at the center it, of it all. It is the essence of what happens when you go from a lower wealth to a middle wealth, right? That's that's when you go on a plane. Absolutely. What do people do when they get a little bit extra money in their pocket? They say, listen, let's go and explore the 
world. I did when I was growing up. Same. I'm sure you did Same. too. Oh, no, absolutely. So when we read these stories, uh, downbeat stories about tariffs, and uh, yesterday I know that Chief Powell is struggling because he doesn't want to cut rates. It feels like that because he knows the consumer's doing well. I mean, if he looks at Expedia, should he be thinking that the consumer's doing well or should he be thinking that Expedia's got inflation under control yeah. because of the bargains they offer? Well, I think you look at that and say Expedia is doing well. I mean, the you know you continue to see good strength and average daily rates and average ticket prices. Yeah. We continue to see spending up. Room nights are growing. Gross bookings are up. It seems very healthy uh, to us, and I think that's certainly been the trend year to date. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at, at, at your company and I think, well, you are the best barometer of how we're doing, and that it's really hard. That we're we're really a bifurcated economy. Industrial. I mean, I was working some of the steel companies. They're yeah. doing terribly. Yeah. But the consumer, you seem to be more levered to job growth, which is really solid. Yeah, listen, I think when consumers have got money in their pocket, again, they want to travel, and Expedia is at the center of travel. Yeah. Now, uh, hotels, when you do hotels.com, you have a winning loyalty program. What does that yeah. mean? Because I think that everyone tells me that yours is the best and I should be a member. <laughs> it's incredible. Why is it incredible? It's simple. Stay 10 nights, get one free. There's no points to worry about. It's not really confusing. You stay 10 nights, you get one free. And importantly, you can stay anywhere. You don't have to pick one certain hotel chain over another. Any of our properties on Hotels.com, you can stay at using your points. And you just did two really important deals, one with, the, with one of the biggest airlines, United, yes. and the other with Marriott. Yeah. What will those mean for your bottom line? Well, listen, I think they're both very positive deals. Uh, United deal, this is something that for us is, we think, going to make us economically better off. Right. I think it's a great deal for them. And same with Marriott. I mean, we've been pretty clear of the course of the last couple of years that we have got our prices in the right spot. We're not in the business of reducing our margins. And the Marriott deal for us, we got very creative on the ways right. that we do business together. But net-net, it's basically a, a piece of business that's going to be a creative to our business. And one last thing. I, I've been thinking that of the companies that do have have some degree of pricing yeah. power because of demand and travel. You guys are, are been, been able to, uh, in places, raise price if you have to. Yeah. Well, what we've done is we've taken a, a pretty thoughtful approach to it, which is we've got low basic pricing. Right. We can then allow you to upsell into things like having your inventory available in our packages product. If you need more demand, even at that low basic pricing, you can pay more on advertising products or just give right. us more margin and rise up in the search results. And that's been something that's been pretty it, darn it, successful. It's me. obvious that advertising in these big search companies really does make money for you. Well, absolutely. Advertising is a big piece of it. It has been one of our largest uh, growing revenue sources. Right. And importantly, if you want to target travelers, where do you go? No, I know. Where I, the travelers are, Expedia. I, I, well, it's why when they do the antitrust, they're going to have to go up the hill and say, listen, the customers have no choice. They have to advertise with us. It's where they are. Well, it's a very competitive industry, as always, yes. but we do have a lot of travelers who are shopping around on Be careful, Expedia. careful. You may have to testify you talk about <laughs> how good they're doing. That is Mark Okers from the CEO of Expedia Group. You know, we've liked this one I, literally since it came public. And we also liked Home Away, now ver Verbo. You got it. Okay, man, buddy's back here to the break. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.